What's up everyone? Welcome to another After Effects stop motion tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the built-in motion interpolation tools within After Effects to make your stop motion smoother. Starting with this very simple shot of a car going past the camera here. Now, this shot is already fairly good looking, fairly smooth. It's on a tripod, it's on a very uniform surface, but it could be smoother. And if we go in here and watch frame by frame, you can see that some frames repeat. So this frame and this frame repeat, new frame, new frame, repeat, new frame, new frame, repeat. So I didn't take enough pictures to make every frame unique. And I want it to go about this speed, so I don't want to speed it up to achieve that. Instead, I'll use the built-in motion interpolation feature. So what you're going to want to do is find this column here, which if you hover over it, it should say frame blending. And if you don't see that column, you can press toggle switches slash modes down here, and it should show up. So what you want to do is click in that box, and you should get a little film strip icon that matches the heading icon right there. And what this does is it just fades each frame together to create a new frame in between. So if we slow it down here, go frame by frame, you can see some of the original pictures standing out there, but you can also see that it's fading from one frame to another to fill in the gaps so that there's always some motion going on. Now, I don't love the look of this for this shot. In fact, I rarely use this mode of frame blending, but it definitely has its place in animation and is good to know about. What I'm going to use though is pixel motion frame blending. And to get that, all you have to do is click in this box one more time and you should get a new icon there and that is pixel motion frame blending. Now I'm gonna play that and hopefully you can tell that this is smoother than what we started with. I'll go back to what we started with there and you can see it's a bit choppy. Turn on uh, the frame fading blending mode there and you can see the, the fades. I turn it back on pixel motion and you can see that it's a lot smoother. This to me looks a lot better and I use this mode much more often. So if we go frame by frame, we can actually inspect the frames it's creating here. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. And as you can also see, as I click on each new frame, there's motion. It's not like before where we were getting repeat images. There's a new frame and it is automatically generating these frames. Now it's not absolutely perfect. I think it's doing a pretty fantastic job with this shot, but I'm gonna break the illusion here and kind of show you how it doesn't look that great for other shots. So here is a similar shot of a truck driving past the camera diagonally, but this was on a different surface. The surface was a bit reflective to the front grill of the truck here. The surface is much more busy. It wasn't in like a contained light box, so the lighting is a little bit uneven between the pictures. And I'm gonna show you how this looks with each frame blending mode. So if I turn on the first one, you can probably guess how it looks, very straightforward. We're just blending the frames together. I'm not a big fan of that, especially because of the more busy flame decals on this vehicle. Kind of makes it stand out a little bit more, makes it feel more unnatural. But I will go to the frame blending mode or the pixel motion blur mode. And you can see that that unfortunately does not look great either. Because the surface is so busy, After Effects is doing a much worse job at creating new frames here. And if we go frame by frame, you can really see the distortion all over the place. So you can see that it's doing things over here that it shouldn't really be doing, doing things over here. Everything is just kind of warping. So if you have a very busy stop motion going on with a very complex surface, you might not want to turn this on at all. For this particular shot, I definitely think it makes it look worse and I would not be using frame blending here or this motion interpolation, uh, pixel motion interpolation here. And if I go back here to the example that looked really good, you can see that it is actually warping the rest of the picture too. You just can't tell because it's just one big color surface, so it looks a lot better. But if you look at the dust on my lens here, you can see it's kind of moving that around, warping it as well. So it's definitely not a perfect feature, but it looks really good in certain times. And I wanna show you one more example here, which is this shot of Optimus Prime transforming. And you can see it's very busy. We've got a lot of things going on. It's him transforming, taking a moment, and then looking up after striking a pose there. And so lots of things going on. And if I try frame blending here, then you can see that it also doesn't look too good. There's a lot of distortion going on there. I'm not a fan of it for that beginning. However, at the end, when he lifts his head, and at the very end of his transformation motion, when he's just kind of closing his fists here, and subtly moving his arms and his chest is kind of taking shape there. I think it looks pretty good. It's just here at the beginning when things are moving, when big things are moving, 
that you get a lot of this distortion and it doesn't look great. So what I did was I just duplicated this layer in this composition and I cut it at the point where I thought the motion interpolation was looking good, which was around here. And so I turned on motion interpolation for that layer, but not the bottom layer. And so you can see here that the compromise there looks like that. So we don't have the bad artifacts there, but we have the benefit of motion interpolation on the back end of that shot for him lifting up his head and clenching his fist there. So motion interpolation is something that you could use selectively, just like how I showed how time remapping can really be used to hone in and perfect a shot. I think motion interpolation can and should be used the same way. It's a very powerful effect, far from perfect, but it's a great tool to have in your stop motion toolbox within After Effects. In the next tutorial, I'll be showing you how to combine some motion interpolation with motion blur to make your motion even smoother and more natural looking. So if you scroll here, you can see that I've actually got a motion blur going on and I'll talk through that in the next tutorial. So be sure to subscribe for that and other future stop motion tutorials as well as stop motion animations on my channel. And thanks for watching.